Welcome back! As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, here for your daily dose of the RARS, where we talk about the very stupid things going on in the world of technology. Do realize I do these videos in order to fund a Silicon Dojo, free to the end user, hands-on technology education in Durham, North Carolina. If you want to take a look at the schedule of our classes, go to silicondojo.com. And with that, I have some exciting news today that is just just so 2025. That's right, the Raspberry Pi is coming out with a new version of their Raspberry Pi 5. Isn't that exciting? Do you care about IoT? Do you care about pushing uh, uh, AI to the edge? Do you wanna build your own robots? Well, today they are announcing a new version of the Raspberry Pi 5 to allow you to do that. Uh, worse to allow you to do that worse. <laughs> And this is why this announcement is so 2025. See, here's the thing. The, pri the price of RAM is going up and up and up and up and up. And the price of RAM affects everybody. It affects people building servers. It affects gamers. It affects everybody across the board. And included in that everybody are the folks that produce the Raspberry Pi. So if you don't know the Raspberry Pis, they're these small, supposedly inexpensive computers you, you use to build things like robots and that type of thing. And so the issue is that the price of RAM is going up so significantly, the folks over at Raspberry Pi, we're try trying to figure out how to make sure Raspberry Pi 5s remained affordable. And apparently you do that by kneecapping them. <laughs> by kneecapping them. So that's right, we are coming out, or they are coming out, with a one gig RAM version of the Raspberry Pi 5, which, I gotta say, should be about a goddamn disaster, right? Because one of the things to be thinking about with Raspberry Pis, do I have more of them around? Right, there's all kinds of Raspberry Pis out there, right? So this is a Raspberry Pi, uh, uh, zero. I think these are the zeros. So uh, this is this is actually a Raspberry Pi five. This is a Raspberry Pi four. Right? They have they have different processors on them. Uh, they have different buses, different uh, wireless architectures, all of that kind of thing. But one of the things you know, uh, to understand is that generally, uh, whenever you build or at least spec computer hardware, you match all the hardware components together. Right? You want you want it by the latest uh, processor uh, that that's on the market and then put put in like a, a, a crappy platter drive, most likely. You want to put in uh, the best GPU on the market and then, I don't know, only put a gig of RAM into your system, right? Because you, you get bottlenecks. Where, where, wherever the slowest component uh, of your system is, that will slow down everything on the system. It doesn't matter if you have the fastest GPU in the world, if the other components are garbage, it's still gonna be a garbage computer. And so one of the interesting things with the Raspberry Pi 5 is to be clear, th these are actually these are actually good little machines. These are good little uh, uh, computers here that can do a surprising amount of stuff. But, but really, when you buy one of these things, eh, you really need four gigs of RAM. <laughs> it really should have, it really should have four gigs of RAM. And let's be honest, it really should have eight. Like if you're gonna go out there and you're gonna buy, buy a Raspberry Pi 5 uh, for doing projects, you really should buy eight. Now, now look, if you, if you narrow down, right, if you are actually uh, building IoT devices at scale, right, you test the crap out of your project, you know exactly to the meg how much RAM you need, maybe you can get away with a gig of RAM, like li literally, if you, if you refine everything down to, to really RAM optimize, uh, one gig of RAM might make sense on a Raspberry Pi 5, but realistically for what most people are doing, um, that's just kind of stupid. <laughs> that's just kind of stupid, which is basically 2025. So yeah, so that's the big thing coming out of uh, Raspberry Pi is uh, they're gonna be coming out with a one gig version. We take a look, if we take a look at their actual blog post celebrating this idiocy, because it's 2025 and you gotta celebrate something. <laughs> you know, if you're in a constant dumpster fire, you know, you do need to celebrate at some point in time. So I guess, I guess we're, ce we're celebrating, we're celebrating the small fires? I don't know. One gig Raspberry Pi 5, now available at $45. Yay! And memory driven uh, price rises. Uh, at Raspberry Pi, our mission is to put high performance, low cost, general purpose computers in the hands of people all over the world. For me, the crucial element of that sentence is low cost. 
And this is something I think we're gonna run into problems with. Does anybody remember Vista era? Remember, anybody remember Windows Vista? Windows Vista was a crap show. <laughs> Let me just be clear. Windows Vista was a crap show across the board. But one of the things that made Windows Vista uh, an even worse crap show is it required a, a lot of hardware resources, right? They were doing a lot of interesting, <laughs> they did some interesting experiments with UI, UX design, with like uh, translucent windows and all that kind of stuff. Um, and the interesting issue with that is that all of that UI, UX stuff actually needed a lot of hardware for the time period, right? This was a time period uh, where computers would come with two gigs of RAM, uh, a high, a quote unquote high-end computer might have four gigs of RAM. And so just, you know, translucent windows and transitions and all that kind of stuff. It was called the Aero interface. It just, it just ate fucking eight hardware resources. Uh, and the problem was, the problem was, right, you had all these computer manufacturers out there and they were like, well, people don't want to buy the more expensive computers uh, that, 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 the, that Windows Vista requires, right? In order for Vista, Windows Vista to run properly, it needs all this hardware. That hardware costs money. So we want to we wanna sell cheaper computers, but they also wanted to install Vista so it was a modern operating system. So basically, Microsoft came out with, it was like, don't quote me on this, but there were there were two different stickers uh, that the manufacturers could put on the Windows Vista machines. Like one was like Windows Vista like ready. So what Windows Vista ready meant is that it actually the the computer um, that that you were buying matched the at least God help us at least the minimum hardware requirements for Vista that Microsoft put out there. So whatever four gigs of RAM, whatever else. Right, so so that was that. But then, but then they're like, yeah, but see, we've got all these other crappy computers that don't match those hardware requirements. How can we sell those? And so Microsoft came out. I do believe the sticker was like uh, Vista compatible, something along those lines. <laughs> kind of like the idea that yeah, Vista will run on it. <laughs> You know, this still run on a potato, apparently. Anyways, so yeah, and the interesting part was, and the sad part was, because I still had my computer repair shop at the time, is we have all we have these customers coming in. We have customers coming in two months after they bought a brand new Vista machine, saying, Eli, I need a tune-up. And again, look, I'm fine taking people's money, right? You you look at porn, you do what you do on your computer, and you need to tune it up every four months. Look, look, we were called the Eli's in our neighborhood of Mount Vernon, Baltimore, because all the gay folks came to us. The gay folks knew they could drop off their computer, no question asked. They got it back in a couple of days for some cash. We literally, we had some, we had some of the folks. They literally came in every two to three months for a tune-up, which shouldn't need to happen. To be clear, should not need to happen. But hey, but hey, everybody, everybody understood what was going on, right? But anyway, so, so yeah, right, I, I, I was fine taking money for tuning up a two-month-old two computer, but I was like, this is weird. Like, I'll take your money, but we shouldn't be doing a tune-up for you. And what I found, what I found with so many of these, br like, literally brand new computers is they really did not have the hardware specifications to run Vista. Like, no matter what I did, and that's what you got to be careful about in the business world, no matter what I did, that computer would not run any better because the issue wasn't that they needed a tune-up, that they had seen too much porn. The issue was it was just a garbage computer. So one of the things that I get concerned about with the Raspberry Pi coming out and saying and stating the crucial element of that sentence is low cost. Are they going to be willing to sell abject fucking trash just so they can keep that low cost moniker? When somebody buys a Raspberry Pi 5 expecting a non-dog crap performance, are they going to be happy with that one gig of RAM? And I got a highly, 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 highly question that. Again, do not get me wrong. If you're a technology professional and you understand the, con the, the concept of optimizing your code based off of RAM constraints, I'm sure this is fun. Again, no snark there. <laughs> right? If you are a parent, buying a Raspberry Pi for 5 for their kid so they can start doing some cool AI projects and you give this piece of crap to them at Christmas, is it gonna make a whole bunch of motherfuckers cry? 
I think it is. Um, I think this is going to be one of the big issues that we see in this current uh, AI idiocy as hardware costs go through the roof. And so basically you have more and more vendors trying to uh, trying to optimize hardware configurations based off of cost, which on its own is not a bad thing. But I think the issue is, is that there's going to be a lot of expectations from customers about what things should or should not be able to do. And it's going to end in a lot of tears. So that's where I think this person's heart uh, is in the right place, but sadly their head might be squarely the fuck up their ass. Because I gotta say, like, here it is. I own a Raspberry Pi 5. I build things like robots. Literally for SiliconDojo.com, uh, the class we're having uh, January 7th, I do believe, is pushing, uh, or it's AI at the edge, using Raspberry Pi. So I'm gonna show how to use all of these different things to put AI at the edge. And I gotta say, I gotta say, a Raspberry Pi 5 paired with one gig of RAM? Oh, lordy. <laughs> Lordy, 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 lordy. Thank God I don't have a computer repair shop right now. Anyways, over the years, I've worked hard to hold down the prices of our single board computers. At $35, a one gig a Raspberry Pi 4 costs the same as a 256 meg Raspberry Pi 1 from 2012, and to introduce new products at ever lower price points from the $10 Raspberry Pi Zero to the four Raspberry Pi Pico. So yes, so this is a $10 computer. Now to be clear, I pay $4 for somebody else to solder on the headers. If you buy a Raspberry Pi Zero, pay the extra four bucks for soldered on headers. I'm just gonna say that. And here's the thing, this is $10, this is $10, but you know, it's got 512 megs of RAM and it's got a processor. You know what I'm saying? Like when, when you're buying this thing, when you're buying this thing, you should, you, you at least should know what the hell you're buying, right? This is, this, a $10 version of this, like Eli, why are you snarky? Why are you saying this is okay for $10 and a one gig version of this for $45 is not okay? It's because of the fucking expectation, right? Just to get this damn thing to run, like when you look at these little USB connectors here, these aren't actually both USB connectors. One of them is a power connector. One of them is a power connector. Uh, and the other is a USB connector. <laughs> and you actually have to get this, I forget the exact name of it. You have to get this special USB adapter just to be able to connect to this thing. So you can have both a keyboard and a mouse connected to this thing. Uh, and if you want to run Raspberry Pi OS in GUI mode, yeah, have fun with that. <laughs> Anyway, so all I'm saying is like simply, simply buying it, like, like everything about this requires a level of understanding that is far superior to what the expectation for one of these things would be. So that's where, yeah, again, hard in the right place. Uh, but today, to offset the recent un unprecedented rise uh, in the cost of LPDDR4 memory, we are announcing price increases to some Raspberry Pi 4 and 5 products. These largely mirror the increases that we announced in October for our compute module products and will help us to secure memory supplies as we navigate an increasingly constrained market in 2026. In happier news, uh, we are also announcing the uh, immediate uh, availability of a new 1 gig version of the Raspberry Pi 5. This brings our flagship platform <laughs> with its quad-core 2.4 gigahertz ARM Cortex A76 processor, dual-band Wi-Fi, and PCI Express port to a new low price point of $45. And this is where we take our flagship pro platform and wipe our ass with it. <laughs> and wipe our ass with it. So yeah, and then they give you a new price point. So the Raspberry Pi 4, four gigs, old price was $55, new price is $60. Raspberry Pi 4, eight gigs was 75, now it's 85. Uh, Raspberry Pi 5, four gigs was 60, now it's 70. Five, eight gigs was 80, now 95. Five, 16 gigs was 120, now 145. I gotta say, when I look at those price points, again, even, even two gigs on a Raspberry Pi 5, I would question, sometimes it's better not to sell a product to a customer. If you know, or you're pretty sure, that when a customer is gonna buy a product, it's gonna end in tears, is that worth it to your brand 
to sell that particular product. And this is something you're gonna need to be thinking about with the whole economic kerfuffle that's going on right now. Just because you can get a customer to buy something, is it wise, even in the midterm, even in the short term, to get them to buy it? Because believe me, they'll come back pretty goddamn quick to start bitching at you about this thing. And that's where I wonder with this. Again, you look at a four gig version going from 60 to $70, right? If you have $60 to buy a four gig version, do you really not have $70? If you have $80 to buy uh, an 8 gig version, do you really not have $95, $15 difference? Because again, when you buy these things, not only do you have to buy this, but you gotta buy the power supply, you gotta buy the heat sink, you gotta buy the, uh, the micro SD card. When, when, they say, when they say 50 or 60 or $95 for the Raspberry Pi, that is very much just for the, the board itself. There's a lot of other stuff that goes with it, adds up the price. I would... I would question the wisdom of this action. Uh, not necessarily the wisdom of putting out a one gig version. Now to be clear, not necessarily that. Because again, with people who actually know what's going on with computer hardware, and, and the fact, to be clear, a lot of major vendors now are using Raspberry Pis as the compute uh, tech stack uh, for their IoT devices. So for those people, right, you're buying a thousand Pis at a shot, you know exactly what you're doing by the one gig version if it works for you. Announcing this as if this is a win to the Pi community, uh, I think this is some horse diarrhea right there. Uh, and I think it might end up biting them in the ass because I just... Anyways, is what it is. So what do you think about this? What do you think about the memory prices going up so it's affecting even things like Raspberry Pis? What do you think about the Raspberry Pi, you know, people proudly announcing that they took their flagship product and kneecapped the fuck out of it and they, they feel proud selling that out on the open market? <laughs> And what kind of, what kind of warning what kind of warning sticker should you have to slap on one of these piece of shit devices? It's like, yes, it's a Raspberry Pi 5, but it's also a piece of shit. I don't know. Be careful. We're going to start seeing more and more of this. If you're going out there to buy build, buy servers, you're going to go out there to buy uh, buy computers, the whole nine yards. Uh, this is going to be a bigger and bigger concern for you. Uh, so just be careful about that. So what do you think? Uh, put your thoughts down below. Do make sure to give us a strong Lutnik comment down there, as would do Americans proud. Do remember I do these videos in order to support Silicon Dojo, free hands-on technology education in Durham, North Carolina. If you're interested, take a look at our schedule at silicondojo.com. If you want to support what we're doing, there's a donor box link down below. And with that, see y'all later.